And welcome back to the Blue Oasis podcast. I am your host, Adam Rothstein. With me is Jeremy Snyder. Uh, Jeremy had uh, played under me back at Towson University. He is a close friend of mine. He is he is a top ace. He is the go-to guy for your problems, and whether that's hockey or life in general. Jeremy, how are you doing? Great, Adam. I'm I'm glad to be here. That was a, that was a great intro. I know this oh, is my this is my you. first time doing a podcast, but that was a that was yeah. a great intro there. I like that. I know. All right. Uh, so we've got a few things to cover. Uh, I actually um, covered this with uh, Joe um, a couple weeks back on coaching, but I just want to really get into the uh, side hustle of this. Um, so, uh, yeah. So you want to tell the uh, audience uh, a little something about yourself? Yeah. I mean, Adam kind of introduced a little bit, but we met back when I was when I was a freshman at, at Towson University back in the dorms. And Adam was one of the first people that I that I saw when he was kind of helping everyone move in. Um, so that's where that's where we met. And I played hockey uh, for four years from 2014 to 2018 at Towson. And Adam was one of our assistant coaches and was great helping out with the team and always cared about the team and everything. And that's kind of where we developed that relationship, whether it was in the in the freshman for me, at least the freshman dining halls are in the in the dorms over there in, in Paca and Tubman, um, back at Towson. But I guess as I as I finished playing two years ago now or two and a half years ago now, I transitioned right into right into coaching because hockey is always something that I love to do and and I've always like known hockey and that's that's what I've loved. So once I was done uh, done playing, transitioned into coaching at Tomorrow's Ice at the same rank that we played at out of ice world um, played out of Towson. So those guys were great and helping kind of start my my coaching career. So I know we'll get into that a little bit, but I guess that's a that's a little introduction about myself. And then that's just my side, I guess my side hustle as as Adam says here, but um my my main job currently I work I work at uh JP Morgan and Chase. All right. That's excellent. Okay, so let's see here we've got that and we've Okay, so, all right, so you, yeah, so you went into how you got started uh, with your side hustle, and actually go more into how you got started with your side hustle as a coach. Um, uh, who are you uh, training right now? Are you uh, training midgets? Or are you training uh, peewee? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess I can kind of go through my my coaching a little bit of my career progression so far of, of what I've done. So started out um, kind of at the end of my senior year was when, as when tryouts are for those of you that don't know um, and youth hockey tryouts are in the springtime. So April or May time um, for the next fall and winter season. So that was at the end of my senior year in 2018 and helped out with tryouts then, and then kind of got into coaching over the summer as um as I, as I finished up my, like finished up my degree and then transitioned into my, my full-time job. So that's where I was an assistant coach. And then I coached with, with Ed and Jason Slusher there coaching 13 and 14 year olds. So that's kind of the same age group, the Bantams that I've been, that I've been stuck with or that I've been wanting to coach, I guess, for the past couple of years. So I was an assistant coach there um, for 18 and 19. And then for 2019 and 2020, that's where I was the head coach with another um, former Towson player, Nick Chavone. Um, he was, he was an assistant coach with me for the 14 U team last year, um, for 19 and 20. And then currently, um, now I coach at the little flyers and it's also their 14 U team. Um, so that's kind of how I transitioned my, my three years and on the side, like I know we'll kind of go into this a little bit more later, but, um, also doing some of the other skills clinics and other, um, skill sessions is how, make a little bit of extra money and doing something that I really love also. Yeah. And, um, and that's the thing with the side hustle is that, you know, it's what you love to do. And I mean, I've met, uh, so many people, uh, well, virtually now, uh, that actually have their own business and actually love doing the things that they, uh, that they were actually had a side hustle of, and it is totally worth it. Um, uh, one question is, 
have you ever thought about building a website uh, for your side hustle and and just making uh, video sales? And um, so, for example, uh, there's this uh, website that I found uh, that actually hosts um, hosts uh, these videos, um, and you download them, and it's it's like a an online course that you get to keep forever. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, have you ever thought of uh, putting that together? Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of going back also to what you're saying is like the the side job or what what I'm doing is something that I really love, so it doesn't feel like it's another job. It's just something that I really enjoy doing and like coaching or playing my playing hockey my whole life. It's something that I always did, and that's what I've always known. So like just going to the rink every night is like a, a release a little bit from from work and something that I love. But uh, going into your question about like creating videos and creating a website, it's definitely something that I've thought about now that I've been coaching for a few years. And I know like next summer that um, my my one uh, friend and I that, that I coach with currently, we, we're looking to start like a, a little hockey camp next next summer. So that's something that we'll probably need a website, more marketing, more like tutorials for. And as like kind of with the website and, and branding a little bit and just seeing different videos and tutorials, that's where I get a lot of my drills from that I do in practice or the, a lot of the skill stuff that I get from practices from Instagram videos or different Instagram accounts. And I'm sure you probably learn a lot from different Instagram accounts that you follow as well. Like it's a great tool to see quick snippets or quick clips and try to implement them into my into what I'm doing for my passion, like my my coaching. And I'm sure you have the same thing. I don't know if you want to touch on anything that you've kind of found on Instagram or any other social media that you like to use. Yeah. Yeah. Um I actually did touch um did find a few things. Um with Audible, I'll find uh these these posts that I like or audiobooks.com. I'll I'll uh, share a certain audiobook that's uh good that mm -hmm. i would like to hear like like one of the cal ripkin biographies or something uh or, or even tim ferris's before our work week or, or something like that that would just put me in, that i would like to recommend to anyone who uh likes listening to audiobooks so definitely it, even even just the free things you know is going to lead you to traffic. Um, I actually just got done with a a uh, webinar uh, that dealt with uh, marketing and branding, and uh, and and when you create that first video, when you create those uh, basic things that that gives the potential customer, hmm, yeah, I I would like to buy this, yeah. It, it it's definitely uh worth it um yeah and that i mean that's all that, that's all like the initial appearance you create branding great marketing great website that's kind of what people look at and they take to and they can kind of run with that and and see that uh, and it really helps your promotional like ability and just people seeing your brand and and your what you like to do yeah a hundred percent ah all right let's see here and and uh, indefinitely. So, anything in particular? Well, I actually, well, you actually just touched on it, but is there anything else in particular that you enjoy about the uh, side hustle, like waking up in the morning or anything like that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, one of the like the things that I really enjoy about about coaching and and going to like and going to do this, it's like for me, it's not for the money because, like I said before, it's just something that I've always done like in hockey is what I love to do and what I want to pass on to the kids that I coach because as I've gotten older and graduated college and now I'm not playing anymore there's so much stuff that I wish I would have known when I was 13 or 14 years old like the kids that I'm, that I'm coaching and that I, that I wish coaches would have told me at that age and just develop different relationships like knowing how to train differently and that's why I'm always like I was saying on Instagram or other social media or other listening to other podcasts and trying to figure out the best way to further the kids that I coach their development and make them want to come to the rink every day and love playing hockey and love training and love getting better because 
that's what I love to do now. And I want to instill that in them also. And like all, of, I would say almost all of my friends and relationships that I've built has come from hockey and come from everything that's come with the game. So that's what I want to kind of pass on to the kids that I coach also that it's more than just, just going to the rink and playing hockey. It's creating those relationships and building that network. And that's why I'm on this podcast talking to you right now, because we've developed that relationship through hockey and through, through coaching. So I think it goes a long way. It goes further than just being at the rink. Yeah. A hundred percent. And, and, you know, you develop that brother relationship, you know, um, you develop, you know, those close, strong bonds and, and there are definitely friends like you, like Matt Stahl, like Joe and like Tar and like Tyler, uh, Darby, uh, I'm actually, um, I'm actually going to do a quick shout out. Um, happy birthday, Tyler Darby. If you are listening to this, um, the podcast actually is going to be on Wednesday, but still happy birthday. And I hope it's a good one. Wanted to uh, just give him a quick little shout out. Yeah, that's my, my former roommate right there. I like that. That's, that's awesome, Adam. Perfect. And with that, we go on to the next question. All right. So what concepts apply to being both a pl player and a coach? Anything you want to add to those last few sentences? Yeah, I, I think one thing is not only in hockey, but also just like at my job also and, and other stuff that I've done in school. It's like if you, have a, if you have a good game or a bad game or you do good on one assignment and you do poorly on another assignment, you know, you always have to kind of have that level head where you're always pushing forward. You're always looking for something better. You're always kind of pushing for that next step in your career or, or at the rink. So I think like for me, like the concepts that apply to being a player is and a coach is you never, you never really want to be too satisfied with where you're at or because there's, there's always something better. And I know that's why you're doing this podcast and why you're creating all the writing these books and doing the audio books and picture books and everything, because you're always looking for something better, trying to create that next opportunity for yourself. And that's kind of what my mindset is as a player and a coach. I want to put myself in a position for success and it really helps like building your network and getting to know more people when you're, when you put yourself in position for success and put yourself out there. So those are two things that I think like that apply to being both a player and a coach. That is um, absolutely perfect. Okay, we still, <laughs> um, I will ask you about how you handle wins, but first I've got some ads I need to get to. Let's um, go. Thing I've written them down. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, how many times have I told you that you need to be updating your skill set whenever you get the chance? Because if you rest on your heels, you know, you're going to be falling off the treadmill. Life is like a treadmill. You either sprint towards the front of the treadmill or you're going to fall off. And, and, or you can walk at least. But if you stand still, you're going to fall off. So in order to handle the treadmill of life, you need some skills. So where do you head? You go to Skillshare.com. Skillshare.com has all the classes that you could possibly want, from animation to drone flying to web development. You name it, they got it. Even guitar lessons, something like that. Right. So whatever it is, uh, go log on to Skillshare.com. You're going to get your first two months free, and you can cancel at any time. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no excuse that you should not be doing this. It is the 21st century. Let's so go go do that so you can make some money out of your side hustle. All right. And next, um, if you need to save money to put a website together, uh, go to honey.com. Or I'm sorry, go to joinhoney.com. So with honey, you can install it on your browser, whether that's Chrome, Firefox. Explore or Oracle or whatever. Um, two clicks and you're done. 
and they save you money. They look for promo codes and you apply those promo codes to your checkout order. And next one we have is Wikibot. Very similar to joinhoney.com. Just apply it there and get more discounts as well. And finally, we have mine. We've got rothsteinvoiceovers.com. This is my website. Ladies and gentlemen, if you need uh, a voice for your next project, I am your guy. It is definitely something I love to do and help others uh, achieve their dream with either an audiobook, picture audiobook, or just some audio for their YouTube video or whatever. But if you need help, uh, hit me up in the chat on rothsteinvoiceovers.com. I'm going to leave a link in the show notes for that. Um, also, if you like what you're listening to here, please consider donating. I have donation links to Square and PayPal. With the Square link, it's going to be, you're going to see a sign for Blue Oasis Books. Uh, that is, it is all the same link. Uh, none of that goes into my pocket. It is all for advertising, hosting, and technical equipment. And it all goes back into the show. If you use the PayPal account, uh, it's going to be Blue Oasis Podcast. You're going to see that logo, but also RothsteinVoiceOvers.com. I will leave both links in the show notes as well. So definitely, um, if you like what you hear here, um, uh, donate whatever you can. Even a dollar helps me out and helps me get the, the message of controlling the source of your income out to the world. So definitely, uh, please consider donating. And let's get back to the show. Okay, that was a long-winded advertisement, uh, but it's really worth it. Okay, let's get back to it. So, as a coach, how do you handle your wins? So it's kind of like as, a, as I was touching on before, like handling the wins. Like when when we come into the locker room after the game, after a win, it's, unless obviously it's a championship game, like you got to be satisfied with the win, but you know, you got to move on to the next game and, and your next, next task, getting ready for practice or the game the next day, whatever, whatever it may be, because there's always something better. There's always room for improvement for us. It's watching video or doing a different drill in practice that may help something that we struggle with in the game. And I think that that really applies like for, for anything like for, for you, Adam, maybe it may be, getting a thousand downloads on, on your podcast. How are you going to handle that? And what's going to be your next step you're going to take? So I don't know. I could you kind of turn that into a question for you too? Like, well, what, what, what would you kind of do is how would you handle your win of getting a thousand, a thousand downloads? Um, well, I, I would probably have a few more donations in there. <laughs> uh, not, not to promote myself. But uh, when I do hit that, I'm definitely going to, uh, share that on my Facebook page. I'm going to share it on Instagram. I'm going to like share it on YouTube. I will share it everywhere. I possibly <laughs> can and let people know all about this as well. Um, yeah. So great question, Jeremy. Uh, okay. Okay. How would you handle the losses as well? Um, I mean, you talked about the wins, but anything different for losses? The losses is, is the same thing and something that, I don't know, something I, I kind of struggled with as I was playing because I would be pissed after I lost and uh, not would not want to talk to anyone or something like that. But as I started coaching, you got to realize that there's that there's more games. There's there's more to it. There's you got to understand how to lose and lose respectfully and kind of move on, like take take your lumps and bruises and, and move on to the next task or the next game and, and just continue to be prepared because those losses are only going to make you stronger. Like if you're constantly winning, then that's going to be all you're expecting. And when you have a loss and they set you back way more than consistent wins would. So those losses I think are extremely helpful for our team because every time we lose, we have a great week of practice after that, or we, 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 we kind of bounce back. Even if it's a short losing streak is it, it's bound to turn around because our team has the ability and, 
you have the ability to turn it around. So it's kind of the, it's kind of the same thing. Like I know, like for you, like you also you're you're pushing through. You're continuing to push out more content, more podcasts, and more books and everything. So I think it's just important to keep pushing through and not really caring what other what other people are thinking or what other people are saying about your team or, or what you're working on. So that's kind of how we we handle the losses because there's always room for improvement. Yeah. And, and if you ever uh, listened to Joe Rogan, um, when he first started uh, this, when he started as a uh, comedy host and, and a WWF or WWE uh, announcer, you know, his goal was just to set out, like, I'm just going to do what I like and screw anyone else um, <laughs> who, who thinks otherwise. And it brought him to be the number one podcast host in the world, not, not, mm-hmm. not just the country, in, in the world. I mean, I mean, he's got at least a million downloads an episode, which is just unfathomable for someone like me. But uh, not to, I don't mean to get off topic. I'm just letting everyone know um, all these things. All right. And we oh, are going to around- Sorry, I, I just think I think that's a great I think that's a great point though. Like when he started out, he didn't care what other people were thinking, and it doesn't really matter what other people are thinking or saying about you or for like coaching. Like if we have a loss, if there's something that we really want to work on, like it's not going to change our mind what parents are saying or what the kids may want to work on in practice because you still want to you still want to make the team better, and that's it's ultimately like up to the coaches what what we think is going to help make the team better, and it's like the same thing for you, like. You're, you shouldn't care what other people are saying or talking about the podcast or whatever because you're going to continue to push forward and you want to try to get it to that same same fame as Joe Rogan. Yeah. You know, you know what, if it, I'm going to keep this up and it, every day. And, and so far, aside from that one week uh, during Thanksgiving, I've been able to keep this up. Uh, definitely, I definitely thank you for that. Uh, and and I've got and this is going to be episode eighteen, I believe. Yeah, eighteen episodes. <laughs> I would have. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I would have never thought of this. Um, yeah. All right. Let's, yeah. What was uh, what was your what was your goal? I went. I, I guess a question for you. Then what is what was your goal when you started? What was your kind of expectation when you started this podcast? My expectation was to uh, just, you know, find some people who just wanted uh, to learn a little bit about their hobbies, uh, some some of the history of this, and also with the history of just hockey in general. I mean, mm-hmm. hockey's been around for uh, over a century, or, or what we would consider it uh, as, uh, with the organized leagues and and all the rules in place. But I mean. You know, a hockey dates back to ancient Egypt, but <laughs> but there's no ice in Egypt. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, there's no ice in Egypt. <laughs> oh, man. The, yeah, yeah, this is why I like interviewing people over having a, over then just myself talking into a room, uh, just. <laughs> blankly and then the neighbors looking over oh man he's talking to himself again yeah this is why i like this is that back and forth um laughter more than the uh more than myself talking and and next week i I have to go back and uh, do this on my own but it's i'm definitely enjoying i'm just living in the moment right now oh okay Okay. uh, love that adam yeah, so what advice would you give to anyone who wants to become a hockey coach? Well, that's a that's a tough one because to anyone, it's it's tough. Like people that haven't played hockey before, I really know about it. Then I, I would say it'd be pretty tough to get into coaching. But for maybe I'll say like other other teammates that I've played with or other people that maybe younger than me that want to kind of get into coaching, I think it's really really important to use your resources and, and use what you've learned from coaches that you've really respected because everyone has probably had multiple co- coaches in their, in their career. And there's been stuff that 
I'm sure that you've liked and you haven't liked that coaches did or you wish co different coaches did. So I think it's just at the beginning of the season, like kind of coming up with a plan or writing the playbook, what, what kind of systems and different things you want your team to run. And I know for, for my team, like we have, we have a few, like two or three pages of expectations for the players and culture for the players that we want to kind of run our organization by and run our team by. So I think having that organization outlined at the beginning of the season and setting those expectations for your players is, is extremely important to, to success. And the players know their boundaries, they know their limits, they know where to be and, and when to be and on time and all that kind of stuff. So I think that's really important. And as like the first step is just being organized and being on top of it and coming to each practice prepared. So with like, or so I'd say organization is the first step and then preparation is the second step. So you want to come into each game prepared with like what systems you may run with the, with your lineup. Um, and I, I think that's really important. And the same thing for practice. You want to come into practice. Like for us, we write up a, a detailed practice plan, every practice of kind of goals and objectives and what we want to accomplish and how we want to make the players better that practice because, and I'm not sure if all the listeners will know, but, it's it's tough to get ice time and you can't just go out and skate like here go out in the field and kick a soccer ball or go shoot a basketball like you can with some other sports it's tough to get ice time so if only an hour and a half or, or two and a half hours or maybe three hours of ice time a week you really have to make the most of each each time you're on the ice so it's just being prepared and getting the most out of the kids and getting the most out of each practice so those are a few things just I would say for someone that wants to start being a coach, it's just organization and and prepper and preparation. Yeah, uh, yeah. The one thing about hockey, yeah, the one thing about hockey is that you know it is probably the most costly sport you can play. It's not like basketball. Baseball is cheap compared to hockey because it, you know you you don't. I don't even think you have to rent the field in some instances uh, certainly not certainly not in high school and and i don't even think i our coach even rented it for field ball i i'm sorry for t-ball and it and uh, yeah not at all like like no it, it was just there in german town where i was and 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 it seemed like okay yeah we're gonna get up early we're gonna play and then we're gonna go get that pizza um with hockey doesn't sound bad yeah yeah with hockey it's uh it's definitely the most expensive sport that i've ever played and i am glad that i had avenues uh that could help and and uh when i was playing for the montgomery cheetahs we would get some charity our way that would give us some uh, ice time and we would get two sessions um uh, as well during that week on saturday and then sometimes we go to breakfast. Um, yeah, like the good old days. Uh, I'm missing that. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's like, and it's the same. It's the same thing as any of your career, your side hustle. Like you, you need to put the time in away when when no one's kind of watching. Also, so for for coaching, like you put the time in watching video when you're not at the rink or or learning new things. Like I like I was talking about earlier, and the same thing for playing. Like even though you're only skating a couple of hours a week, you got to put in the time to work out and stick handle and, and shoot at home. It's the same thing with your side job. Like you're, you're putting your time in writing your books and when no one's watching and they just see, see the end results. So that's kind of, that's kind of how it is for, for hockey and also for any other kind of side hustles you're doing because people are only caring about the end result. And if you're putting that time in by yourself, then it'll, it'll pay off in much larger dividends than, if you're not putting the time in and just kind of showing up for the end product. Yeah. Ah, uh, man. Oh, we are at, um, wow. We, we're almost at the 40 minute mark, or I think we are somewhere around there. Ah, uh, um, if there's one piece of advice that you could give to my listeners and to my viewers as well, I'll put this on mm -hmm. YouTube. Uh, if there's one piece of advice that you would give them going into 2021, what would that be? I don't know. That's, that's tough. I would just say, I would say kind of like I've been 
into now and talking about the whole this whole podcast so far i would just say you kind of put yourself out there and, and like you've been preaching every all your episodes of your podcast and everything just do what you love and try to find enjoyment in what you love because it makes waking up in the morning and, and doing what you love way way easier than kind of going to a job that you hate or something like that because then the days drag if if you want to leave that job leave the job like try to do what you can to make yourself happy because that's ultimately more important in the long run because I don't know if you don't like your company or something like that like the company's going to continue operating with or without you but it's your ultimate happiness in, in the long run and I think just putting yourself out there and doing what you love and making those connections with meeting new people or starting something new I think that's the most important thing and not really caring about what anyone else thinks or says because I don't know I just think someone else may think something negatively or say something negatively to you one time but ultimately it's like your happiness in the long run that's long that's long lasting and the long, long longevity there so I think that's the most important thing for me yeah and uh, and I do want to just point something out um if if you're listening to this uh yeah you're probably on a computer or you're on, on an iPhone or something and and you need um money to start a business or, or if you're going um or if you're going to be broke uh I mean I would still say you you get out and at least go put in the effort I mean I don't even say and and you can actually start all of this um for under a thousand dollars uh in podcasting at least uh so here's the thing you can go buy a used laptop uh for like 200 bucks or you can get like the pine book pro 64 uh for 200 dollars and and it doesn't and your camera quality doesn't have to be great i mean it, it really doesn't for a podcast and and you're mostly going to be doing this uh through audio so yeah so start there uh it's yeah you got 200 dollars i've I'm with Buzzsprout right now. I've got twelve dollars a month right there, and and I've got audet. And you can get the Audacity software for free. And if you really wanted to up this, you could do Adobe Audition, like what I have for twenty. And and there you go. You're at you're 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 not even at you're not even a quarter of the way there for a thousand dollars and. And you can start something uh, and just generate content. And then you can also put it on YouTube, which costs you nothing. You can just start a channel with it just right away. And, and yeah, so like if you can scrap a, a, couple, a few hundred dollars together, you can start something. So, so why wouldn't you? I, and yeah. Yeah, you can give up a f certain things. You you got to give up a cer certain things so you can get to the place where you want to go. And let me tell you, the goal in life should be to be live be living a life of true freedom and independence, not you know, so that you can just go pick up on a random Tuesday and or a random day of the week and go golfing whenever you want. We, you know, exactly. you know, and, and Jeremy, definitely, you, you would agree with me that the world would be better off if, uh, if we, you know, if we could just go whenever we pleased, if we could just operate it when we wanted to and just, you know, just go, enjoy ourselves oh yeah that's i mean that's my ultimate goal because i love golfing like you, like you just kind of mentioned so anytime i would be able to go it would be amazing if i can just kind of go whenever i want to go as i please so that's that's the ultimate goal to do something i love and make make enough money to be able to go golfing every day or whenever i want yeah and and i am so grateful that i joined uh the nine figure network and i have the mentor that i do um a hundred percent uh and yeah was, I, I think i think it'd be great adam if you just kind of went through a lot of steps and some different costs for starting a podcast i think if you 
included that on your website, that may be great for some of these listeners to kind of see the details and the, and the cost of really starting your own podcast with podcasting becoming so popular nowadays. Yes. Yes. And, you know, get links to those, um, link to the podcast, uh, right here on um, for Apple podcasts and, uh, the link to the show. And, and I will uh, definitely give them the steps. Uh, definitely great. Um, thanks for the suggestion. Also on my website, if you want to start uh, freelancing on upwork.com, I get, I have a sample resume that you can, uh, used to uh, fudge around. You can uh, mix that up. That is zero dollars and zero cents. Go to my website, go download that as well. Because if you have a computer, you can get on Upwork and and uh, j- just be a VA for a little while, a uh, virtual assistant. And, and you can make some money there. Um, I'm actually uh, hoping to hear back from a $500 project um, which I could get done in one night, which would be uh, the first for me, $500 a night. I've never seen that before, but, um, but hey, this is what, these are the opportunities that happen when you put your mind to it. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, I, I thank you once again for listening to this. Uh, definitely go donate to the uh, podcast um, again. Uh, I don't (laughs) care of the amount, uh, but definitely uh, consider donating because so we can get this message out there. And and the, the true road to peace and prosperity is controlling the source of your income and also uh, creating and and creating that life of true free and independent and independence. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Adam, for having me on. This was this was a lot of fun. So hopefully, I can come back on soon, and we can we can talk some more. Uh, yeah, a hundred percent. Definitely. Um, one. Uh, definitely. Uh, w- w- yeah. Well, I'll definitely schedule a different session. And also, um, any other hobbies aside from hockey that you would like to discuss on the next episode? Um, we'll, we'll leave that as a surprise, I guess, for the, for the listeners, see okay. it, make it a surprise episode. Okay. So they, can, they can tune back in. All right. Um, okay. Uh, definitely. T- All right. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, follow the, follow my advice. Um, if you need help, uh, go to my website and download that Upwork resume for free. Um, that is my treat to you. And until the next one, uh, stay safe, stay great. And I'll talk to you then.